Hi, this is Dave from JavaCodeJunkie.com, and welcome to another episode in our Java FX for Beginners series. In this episode, we're going to continue with the setup of our development environment. More specifically, we're going to download and install a plugin for the Eclipse integrated development environment. Now, this plugin will provide Java FX integration in Eclipse, and it helps us with creating Java FX applications. So let's get right to it. Open up your Eclipse IDE and click on the Help menu. And then scroll down till we get to the Eclipse Marketplace. Click on that one. And the Eclipse Marketplace wizard opens up. The Find box, we're going to enter the name of the plugin that we want to install. And in this case, it's E bracket fx bracket clips probably couldn't have made it any more cryptic if they did, if they tried hit the enter key and the wizard will search the eclipse marketplace and you see we've found the eclipse plugin that we're looking for eclipse efx clips 3.6 we'll click on the install button as with most software packages, we have to read and agree with the terms of a software license agreement. Once you've done that, click the radio button, I accept the terms of the license agreement, and click on the finish button. You'll see down on the bottom right hand corner the uh, software is installing. You'll see a percentage complete. Now once that reaches 100%, Eclipse will need to restart in order to have that plugin that we downloaded take effect. So we'll just give that a minute. There we are. Restart to apply the update. Restart now. And we can close the welcome screen. And now if we go to the File menu and New and Project, you'll see we have a new Java FX section. Click on Java FX Project. We're going to create a new project. Click Next. We'll give the project a name and I'm going to just call it Test for the purposes of this test. So we just want to make sure that uh, Everything's working as it should with the plugin. So click on the next button and click next one more time and then click finish. And the application has been created. So we're going to go down and look at the source folder and then the application package. The plugin has created a Java class called main, and it's also created an application.css file for styling. And we're going to get into that in later episodes. But for right now, I just want to make sure that we can get this application to run. So let's open up the main.java in our IDE. And you'll notice that there are a whole bunch of red lines under under uh, various parts of the program. And what's happening here is, although we've installed the plugin, we still haven't installed the Java FX libraries. So we're going to need to download and install those as well. So open up your browser, and we're going to search for Java FX. We'll click on the Java FX on the OpenJFX site. scroll down and click on the visit button in the getting started section. We're going to select Java FX and Eclipse and non-modular from IDE. So this is a series of instructions that we're, we're basically going to follow to uh, download and install the Java FX libraries. We do have a link right here to download the appropriate Java FX SDK or software development kit for your operating system. Once we've downloaded it, we need to unzip it to a location on your hard drive. So first, let's click on that link. 
and scroll down till we get to the latest release. Uh, as of today, the latest release is version 14, Java FX 14. And I'm going to be installing it on a Windows 64-bit computer, so let's click on the download for that. Just take a moment. And once that's done, I'm going to go to my Downloads folder. We'll see the file that we just downloaded. We'll right-click and say Open. Inside that zip archive, we have all of the files pertaining to Java FX 14. The ones that we're specifically interested in are under the lib directory. And all of these are the jars that contain the Java FX library code. So we're going to back up one level, back up another level. This folder and all subfolders and contents we're going to copy. And we need to provide a home for that on our hard drive. So we'll go to our C drive. In my case, I'm going to go to Development, Tools, and I'm going to paste that right here. So right click and paste. You can put it wherever you need to on your system but just remember the location because we're going to need that folder name later on. So now we've downloaded and unzipped the Java libraries. Let's go back to Eclipse. And you'll see that our errors still remain. But what we're going to do now is we're going to create a user library from within Eclipse and adding the jar files that we just looked at in the lib folder. So let's go to Project, Properties, Java Build Path, click on Class Path, and on the right on the buttons we'll click Add Library, choose User Library, click Next, click on User Libraries, and we're going to click on new. So we're going to create a new library. We're going to call it JavaFX 14. Click OK. Now that we have a name for our library, we're going to add the external, add external jars to the library. So click on add external jars. Then you need to navigate to wherever we just unzipped the Java FX software development kit. Navigate to the lib folder. We're going to click on the first shift click to select all of those jar files and we'll click open. Those will be added to our user library and then we're going to just hit apply and close. We're going to hit finish and the Java FX 14 library has been added to the class path, so we're going to hit apply and close. And magically, all of our errors have disappeared. So, there's still one further step. If you try to run it at this point, we're going to, I believe, get an error. And here it is, the error, Java FX runtime components are missing and are required to run this application. So let's go back to our uh, browser and we go back to getting started. And if we scroll down, you'll see right here this warning. If you now run the project, it will compile, but you'll get the error. Java components are missing and are required to run this application. So what we have to do is we have to add some arguments to the virtual machine. So we'll click on Windows, because that's the version we're running on, and just copy, right-click, copy. We'll go back to the IDE. And here under Run Configurations, we're going to click on this uh, little triangle down arrow, and then choose Run Configurations and Arguments. Now right here under VM Arguments is where we're going to paste and the only thing we have left to do now is to add the actual location of the JavaFX libraries that we unzipped. 
So we'll go back to your file explorer, click on the Java library SDK folder, click on the lib folder, and then we're going to copy that from the bar from the address bar above. This is the location of our JavaFX libraries. From there we go back to our IDE, we'll right click and we'll paste that location in there to replace what we had. Click apply, you can click close and now we'll just run it again. And hopefully we'll get a nice shiny window. There we are. So we have set up our development environment, JavaFX. We're now able to create JavaFX programs. Thanks for watching. In our next episode, we're going to look at the architecture of a JavaFX program. Hope to see you then.